Welcome to the stream. Come on, you prick. There you go. Ah, This thing's playing me up today. Hang on. I'm not sure what's going on today. This thing does not want to behave itself. I'm not sure what's going on, but it doesn't want to behave itself. Hello, welcome to the stream. What if I just move that there? There you go. It's still there. Fuck you, stupid green screen. Hiya. I'm really not sure what it's uh, doing today. There we go. Sorry, we'll start talking about the, the games <laughs> now, hopefully. We can start talking about the games. No? Okay, I'm just going to fucking yank this thing over here. There you go. There you go. There we go, we're sorted. Sorry about that. Technical, technical issues. I'm really not sure what's going on with the bloody thing today. It's become all yo oval-shaped. But anyway, alas, alas, we move on. Welcome to the show today. I still got uh, the Scottish goalkeeper with me uh, to keep me company because I think that's the funniest image of the tournament thus far. Welcome uh, to today at the Euros from the Football Fan Show. Once I've uh, sorted out my green screen and been on all unprofessional, it was such a rush to to get here. How are you doing today? Uh, we're here to discuss and talk about the Euros whilst I, whilst you watch me sweat like a pig because I've got two fucking lights on my head and my forehead is about to become shinier than, than uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's trophy cabinet. There you go. That's how I, <laughs> I just had to think of that. So what do we think of the games today? Of course, we'll be reviewing the two matches that were played today. Uh, so you can go watch. Uh, so if you uh, haven't seen the results, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about that. There's going to be spoilers. Spoilers uh, for that. And of course, we're live every night throughout the Euros. So uh, be sure to uh, join us and you can watch the uh, rerun on YouTube. This actually goes up immediately on YouTube after the program. Um, as much as Twitch will allow me to to do that as quick as it will but uh live once again on on twitch.tv forward slash the football fan show thank you very much for uh oh i got called an underrated youtuber today so i don't know whether that's meant as uh, an insult or a compliment i took it as a compliment remember you can email us anytime and we should open the phone line so you can call us if you would like to dissect the action with me uh, for today at the Euros. Uh, the phone number is 0333 303 41 45. Uh, Skype is dead air media. You can uh, Skype us there. Uh, just t type that in on Skype if you uh, don't want to call us. You can call us on Skype and it's for free with the power of the internet. The phone lines are open now. So if you would like to call us, that's that that tool is available to you right now let's move on and talk about today's games we're going to get into the news a little bit later on we've got news uh from the 
Well, we've got offbeat. I said offbeat football news coming up from Cristiano Ronaldo and something that he did yesterday that may or may not have had a de detrimental effect on this stuff, Coca-Cola. Because he only drinks water. Isn't that right? The Euros then. Let's get uh, let's get our initial reaction to today's games before uh, before we give you the report. So I was not able to watch. I'm going to be totally honest right now. I was not able to watch the uh, Hungry Portugal game in full as I was on the radio at the time. I was doing my day job, uh, so I was presenting a radio show at the time. But I did keep an eye on it, and from what I saw, Hungary looked damn good and. Obviously, Portugal got three goals in 10 minutes at the end of the match. Uh, but let's react to that France game. France won Germany now. It was an own goal that gave uh, the result to France. And you can see the sensationalist uh, title uh, for this stream tonight. Uh, Portugal scored three in 10 minutes. And will Germany exit at the group stage? I don't know. I think there's a good shout. I think there's a good chance of that happening. I think there really is a good chance of that happening because I just don't see... Um, does that do anything for the shadow? I don't know. Um, I just don't see uh, Germany producing the goods. I really don't. I just really don't see them producing the goods. That is my opinion. Uh, you know, with uh, Joachim Löw departing the club, uh, departing the country, the national team. After, let's get into today's games in Hungary and Portugal. And uh, Cristiano Ronaldo became the top goal scorer in European Championship history today as Portugal beat Hungary in front of more than 60,000. It was great to see uh, 60,000 fans there. There is a reason for that. It is because the leader of Hungary is, I don't know whether it's a president or a prime minister, is absolutely football mad. So essentially it was fuck COVID. We're packing up the national stadium. Uh, Ronaldo converted an 87 uh, minute penalty for a game that he was largely uh, was largely uneventful for him because he'd gone missing throughout the whole thing and on the 87th minute he scored his 10th uh, goal in the competition overtaking Francis Michel Mikel um, is it Michel Mike it's Mikel My Michel I don't know people say Michel Platini don't they but I've always called Mikel Platini but Michel Platini uh, on nine goals, so Cristiano Ronaldo is the top goal scorer in uh, European f in the history of the Euros. Uh, his eleventh goal, by the way, came five minutes later, and it was peak, peak Cristiano Ronaldo. It was peak Cristiano Ronaldo because uh, he took the ball around the goalkeeper, the, around the Hungarian goalkeeper. For Portugal's third, it was a tasty, tasty bit of footwork. It was, it was very nice. It was very nice. World Cup holders, France and Germany, we'll get on to that one. But the result looked uh, comprehensive, but Portugal had to work hard to defeat uh, their opponents in front of the biggest attendance of the tournament so far. The 67,000 capacity Puskas Arena in Bu Budapest is the only venue at Euro 2020 to have full crowds and the fans helped create that atmosphere and much missed passion. But the home supporters were silenced in the fourth minute when Liverpool's Diogo Jota had a chance but saw his shot pushed away by the Hungarian keeper when a pass a wide open from Ronaldo may have been the better option. What I will say, if you didn't watch this game, you'd expect Hungary, uh, being the the, the quote-unquote weaker team, to put 11 men behind the ball. This is certainly what I was expecting. I was expecting them to put 11 men behind the ball Waste as much time as possible, be as dirty as possible, as shithousery as possible. And you know what? I thought they would do that. I was wrong. I was wrong. What I saw from the game, and admittedly I did not watch the whole game because I was working at the time, but the moments that I saw, they were passing it about, about, around the back. They, they looked like they wanted to play. They wanted to outplay. <laughs> play Portugal which was always a d disastrous idea but actually for for 80 odd minutes they look damn good for it it's fantastic they look very good and the way Germany played today I mean is it sensationalist to suggest that Hungary could beat Germany 
Probably. Probably. But, I mean, Hungary looked good today. They looked very good. They were just unlucky to concede three goals in the space of 10 minutes at the end of the match. Otherwise, for, for obviously, it's a 90-minute game. For 80 minutes, they looked damn good. But, you know, in the last 10 minutes, they were absolutely shite. Uh, Portugal, whose uh, starting 11 included six Premier League players. <laughs> Pepe, who's 38, and Ronaldo, who's 36. Although Ronaldo could probably carry on. He'd probably be in his 50 and, 50s and still be good enough to play in that Portugal team. Like, that's how... In, that's not a dig at Portugal, by the way. That is in, how insanely dedicated and how good Cristiano Ronaldo is. Um, and, and anyone that saw his press conference here on Monday, if you saw his presser on Monday, we're going to talk about that as a bit of Euro offbeat news coming up. Um, but Portugal's who start, uh, starting 11 included six Premier League players, created the best chances in the first half, but Jota was denied with Ronaldo's glancing header wide and firing over uh, when he should have hit it on target. Hungary were mostly restricted to long-range shots, but they were damn good uh, with goalkeeper Rui Patricio. Uh, however, home uh, substitute Zabolic, I'm gonna, that's what, how I'm going to pronounce it, thought he had scored when he had squeezed a shot at, in at the near post. I was so gutted for Hungary, but he was, to be fair, he was a mile offside. <laughs> I, th I mean, he, he ran up to the linesman and just went, no, 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 I'm not offside. I'm not offside. And that's like, the replays clearly show that you're effectively in another country. You are so far offside that you might as well have been in Austria. That's how far offside you were. I mean, why are you complaining about that? You knew you were offside. Obviously, he wants to score for Hungary, but he was, yeah, he was so far offside that he was in another country. And yeah, I don't. I, I find it hilarious when when uh, when players do that, where they go up to the referee and go, "No, no, no, I'm not offside." But you were, <laughs> you were so far offside. You were in Austria. Like, there, <laughs> there's no argument. You've got no legitimate argument to argue that you were onside because you weren't. That being said, I was I was a uh, disappointed for Hungary. They they they. They probably deserved a point by the last 10 minutes of the match. Uh, they probably deserved a point in that in that game, but they didn't get it. And they lost 3-0 to a, a deserving Portugal in the end in the last 10 minutes. Uh, so, Ronaldo had his final say in injury time. He got uh, two goals in this one. So, yeah... Unlucky for Hungary because they didn't play the way I was expecting. As I, as I was alluding to earlier, they didn't play the way I was expecting them to. I was expecting them to play kind of Burnley style. Sean Dyche. Well, I say Sean Dyche football. You know, very defensive. 11 men behind the ball, part of the bus. And yeah, you know, they didn't get that close to the Portugal goal. As as the as I said, you know, it's it was mostly long shots. But they had a chance. They had a good chance. Shame he was offside, of course, by a country mile. But... You know, they. I think for for like, you know, seventy five, eighty minutes, Hungary were were good good on to get a point in that game and probably deserved it. It's only the last ten minutes that they completely capitulated. Um, so it was unfortunate. Uh, two goals from Cristiano Ronaldo and Guerrero uh, with the eighty fourth minute a goal for uh, Port uh, Portugal to give them the lead in uh, that one. It also gives Portugal the lead in uh, the group as well, uh, which is uh, which is fantastic as well for them, as they are the defending champions, lest we not uh, forget. Let's move on to the other game, the more boring of the two, in my opinion. Um, oh, by the way, before I continue, you can vote on the game of the day on our Twitter page. It's at TFFS Live. Go and vote for it now. Obviously, you've only got two games to vote for today. Uh, it's either Portugal 3, Hungary 0, or France 1, Germany 0 at TFFS Live. At the moment, 83.3% uh, of you going with uh, the 3-0 win uh, for Portugal against Hungary. I'm inclined to agree with you uh, because it was a fantastic game. I don't think there's any debate in that one. Um, I thought the, uh, the game was fantastic. Uh, by the way, we ran a few polls. 
uh, last night. Uh, we we ran the hung, uh, the Portugal Hungary a draw poll. Who would win? Uh, one hundred percent of you obviously uh, went with Portugal. One hundred percent of you were right. And then we ran a poll to say who would win: France, Germany, or would it be a draw? At uh, fifty four. 0.5% of you went with Germany. Uh, so 45.5% of you got it right and, and predicted a France win. No one is going for draws. No one's going for draws. I don't think anyone's gone for a draw yet. If I go back and... Actually, no, to be fair, people have been voting for draws, uh, particularly in that Scotland-Czech uh, uh, Republic game. Oh, and, and people thought Croatia would beat England, and then 20% of people thought there would be a draw in that match. Um, no, I don't... No. Uh, if England are going to draw a game, it's going to be against the Czech Republic. And yeah, so go go to our Twitter page at TFFS Live uh, on Twitter right now. You can vote for our poll, which is the game of the day. You decide. I uh, don't know how to do the jo- the Geordie guy from Big Brother. You decide. World champions France. They kicked off their Euro 2020 campaign with a win over Germany. And outgoing German manager Joachim Lowe, who, by the way, I still saw is the greatest fashionista in football, and that all his coaching staff appear to have. Does he just take them into like the German equivalent of MS and go, you know what, guys, put your wallets away. I'm going to buy us all World Cup clothing, and we're all going to wear exactly the same thing because they all wore this. They were wearing a black t shirt, like grayish trousers, white shoes, all of them. Uh, so they clearly enjoy um, wearing stuff in unison, the Germans. That's how technically efficient they are, that all their coaches have to wear the same uniform. So the World Champions France started their Euro 2020 campaign with a win over Germany, uh, thanks to Matt Hummel's own goal in a high-quality heavyweight Group F match. Uh, Hummels recalled for this tournament after being told by coach Joachim Lowe in 2019 that his international career was over. Uh, diverted Lucas Hernandez's cross into his own net in the first half of a fascinating contest at the not Allianz Arena, the Munich Stadium or the Stadium. Uh, yeah, is, what, what do they call it? The Munich Stadium or the Stadium of Munich or something like that. Why didn't they just play at the uh, Olympic Stadium? That's a great venue. That's an underrated venue. I wish 1860 Munich played there. Although 1860 Munich fans hate that venue. <laughs> That's why I'm not a true fan. Love 1860 Munich though. Uh, the tournament favourites France were marginally better than the two sides, but appeared to be in third gear for much of it. To be fair, France did look like they were on autopilot. I know it takes a while to get going when you come into these major tournaments. It does take time. And um, we've seen with uh, the uh, Kante, uh, not the Kante, uh, the... Um, Mbappe and Giroud stuff that's going on. There's a bit of a an argument there. Uh, I don't think they're going to... I want them to uh, self-destruct, as the French team are known for doing. Remember the 2010 World Cup uh, under Raymond Domenech when uh, the, t- the team just went, you know what, we're not going to play for you, manager. We're not going to play for you. And they exited the group stage. Don't think that's in danger of, of happening to uh, Didier Deschamps, but, uh, oh, if it happened... That would be wonderful. Not going to, I don't think, but it would be wonderful if it did happen. Uh, Paul Pogba sent the ball over the bar from a corner with uh, his shoulder. Kylian Mbappe had an angled shot saved, and Karim Benzema had goals ruled out for offside, and Adrian Rabiot Rabiot, Rabiot hit the uh, outside of the post. I really should learn these names. Uh, Germany came into the finals with big questions, obviously hanging over their heads obviously we know Joachim Lowe's leaving and um, what is interesting he said uh, to the German media that he won't be taking a club job in the summer that's good because we've covered Joachim Lowe's atrocious club management career on this channel go check it out in a previous video on our YouTube channel uh, so yes Germany came into the into the finals big questions hanging over their best 11 as well as the chances of success after an uncharacteristic characteristically turbulent few years. They, they lost uh, to North Macedonia in uh, World Cup qualification uh, not too long ago, I do believe, but proved typically competitive uh, finals opponents. I mean, that's that's the thing. Germany might have a bad qualifier, but when the tournament starts, that's when maximum focus 
uh, is just switched on for the Germans. They just switch on. They always switch on for tournaments. Um, although you say that, 2018 World Cup, what happened? South Korea knocked you out of the group stage. That was a that was a terrible World Cup for Germany. But considering that Italy and the Netherlands didn't even qualify um, for that tournament, I mean, I, I would <laughs> I would say Germany got uh, a little bit lucky to to. I think they should be uh, considering themselves fortunate to get jumped out the uh, group stage of that tournament. So yes, Thomas Muller, another player recalled after being jettisoned by Löw, uh, headed uh, wide with E.K. Gundogan slicing an effort past the post from a good position in the box and Ganabe seeing a shot deflected um, on <laughs> onto the roof of the net. Uh, it was not just the actual football that was of interest either. Uh, there was a, uh, a hint that Germany's defender, Rudiger, may have been bitten on the shoulder by Paul Pogba. What is this? I know the Copa America is happening right now, but we don't need to channel our inner Luis Suarez for the Euros, please. We don't, we don't need to do that, okay? Can we not do that? Can we not channel Luis Suarez for the Euros, please? Can we just keep Luis Suarez where he, where he belongs? In Spain or in South America wearing a muzzle. By the way, the replays of this incident proved uh, to be inconclusive. Uh, this, by the way, came, and I don't know if you saw this. Go watch it. There are there is um, uh, replays of this. I know ITV showed this on the um, at half time. Uh, there was a Greenpeace activist that had parachuted into the stadium, and you know I get protest, but this guy, whoever organised this, was a complete fucking mong, just a complete idiot, a complete idiot. Because not only did they put themselves in danger, they actually put a lot of people within the stadium in danger. And, you know, you're thinking, oh, yeah, it's, a, it's an open-air stadium. He probably landed in the middle of the pitch. He did land in the middle of the pitch, but he could, got caught up in uh, camera lines. There's debris. There was debris that almost hit Didier Deschamps, the French manager. It was absolutely stupid, and I hope the guy gets arrested. Uh, it was absolutely, completely stupid. Um, so, yeah, the... Um, Shielding, sorry, the shielding equipment, uh, 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 cr as he crashed into the pitch, being hurried away by security. Uh, but he, uh, shielding equipment from the stadium nearly hit Didier Deschamps. Now, quite frankly, if that if that debris had hit Didier Deschamps, you know, I often get phone calls that say, "Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault?" Well, Didier Deschamps, prepare for those phone calls. I might be the first one to call you. Hey, Didier. Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Was it Greenpeace's fault? Then why not sue the bastards? Um, I'm not saying I'm not saying Greenpeace don't do a good job. I'm just saying that this was an absolutely, utterly clusterfucked, stupid idea. And that's all I'm going to say about it. France wins mean they, and Portugal, who beat Hungary three 0 earlier today, take the early initiative and in the group looks like this group f uh portugal top of the group with the goal difference plus three france are second with plus one germany a third with a negative one goal difference minus one and hungary a bottom of the table i would i would suggest hungary actually don't deserve to be bottom of the table but their last 10 minutes proved that they were shite but they were only shite in the last 10 minutes but then again this is a 90 minute game i'm kind of clutching at straws here aren't i uh, it's a 90-minute game, not an 80-minute game. If it was Rugby Union, they'd have been fine. They'd have drawn nil-nil. But uh, because it's football, you know, there's that extra 10 minutes on the end that you've got to you got to play for. So, yeah, they did uh, they did not do well in the last last 10 minutes. So, what do we think? France to win still, or I know it's going to take a while for them to get going, but they kind of look somewhat. Uh, they they look somewhat towards the end that they were firing. Not on all cylinders, but some of the cylinders. They they shifted gear from second gear to third gear at the very least. Um, 
but yeah, they did look largely on autopilot for the majority of that game. Uh, 37 minutes left to vote in our poll, and it's currently 63.6% of you that have gone Portugal 3, Hungary 0 in that uh, for your game of the day, with France 1, uh, Germany 0, currently at 36.4%. So, if you think that is your game of the day then go vote for it on our Twitter account, at TFFS Live. We're doing a lot of polls throughout the Euros, so, uh, yeah, go go follow us there. Go vote, get your uh, opinion and your voice heard. Uh, let's have a look at tomorrow's fixtures before we head into your uh, European Championship news headlines. And we have a bit of offbeat news from Portugal, which we'll start with. Uh, the 2 o'clock kickoff, yay! We have a 2 o'clock kickoff tomorrow. I missed that today. I missed the two o'clock kickoff. Ah, oh, I was just, I just sat round going, what the fuck am I meant to do at two o'clock? There's nothing to do. I'm not working yet. Come on. I want football. Luckily, we've got a two o'clock game and it's Finland versus Russia. That should be an interesting one. The two arguably weakest teams in Group B. You know what? Obviously, you know, the stats from the, the first game should suggest that Russia should absolutely spank Finland. But you know what? And and, and as I said on, I, I think, Monday or Sunday, I can't remember where when I said it, but Finland, you know, people are, people still say, oh, you know, they, should have, they shouldn't have played the game against Denmark. They should just be given a point. No, don't deny them the win. They took advantage. It's not their fault that UEFA forced Denmark to play. It's UEFA's fault. And uh, it's not Denmark's fault either. It's UEFA's. Uh, Finland versus Russia. I don't know. I think... I think I'm going to... I'm not a betting man. I don't bet. But if I was, I'd put a cheeky punt on Finland winning that match. Maybe by a goal to nil. Even though Denmark absolutely dominated Finland in their game. And if you look at the stats, Finland only had one shot. <laughs> it turned out to be enough to uh, get the goal and win the game um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go finland for that one against russia the two o'clock kickoff in group b group a five o'clock it's turkey versus wales will the turks be cooked by the welsh will the turkey be cooked by the welsh <laughs> probably yeah i expect wales to to win <laughs> win that one given how turkey played against italy absolutely i expect uh I expect Wales to beat Turkey. I think they've got Wales have more quality than the Turks can provide. And everyone was talking about, oh, you know, Turkey are the dark horses for the group. No, no, they're not. Uh, Turkey are, are going to lose that one against Wales, no doubt. No doubt in my mind. The more interesting game is at eight o'clock, and it's Italy versus Switzerland. And in my head, let me let me just explain what what is going through my head right now because I'm I'm debating whether. Switzerland are actually going to just stick 11 men behind the ball because as we've seen against Turkey Italy aren't doing their usual uh take you know they're not do doing their usual tournament play well they actually no they don't, they're just not being typically Italy which is take the lead and then shove 11 men behind the ball and if we get a second we get a second um which is what England used to do England used to take the lead but of course Italy has has always historically had better players than England so when, whenever England took the lead, they would immediately concede a goal at some point. Whereas Italy, the one nil was always good enough because they were they had such quality that they were never going to concede. But now Roberto Mancini has just he's completely changed the way the Italian philosophy, and hopefully, I hope it sticks. Fingers crossed because they're the last league in Europe. Serie A is the last league in Europe where that atrocious kind of Jose Mourinho defensive part of the bus football is accepted. And if it stops getting accepted, if they start playing attacking football, then maybe we'll see a much better style present itself in Syria. And then maybe Jose will not be the... I, I don't know if he'll be a success at, at Roma. We'll, we'll wait and see. But anyway, not an anti-Jose Mourinho rant. Uh, Italy versus Switzerland. Yeah, Italy not playing that same kind of defensive go 1-0 up, then defend, defend, defend for the rest of the game. And see if we can get if we can get a second on the counter. That'd be fantastic. No, 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 no. Roberto Mancini wants Italy to press. He wants them to dominate. And for me, it's too early for this squad 
to do anything at a major tournament. I think they've got a few old heads in there that will give the, the, the some of the young players some great tournament experience. I would say the 2022 World Cup for me would be Italy's time to shine, which is also England's time to shine as well. England are winning the 2022 World Cup, I'll have you know. Um, hopefully. That's what the plan always was. Oh, Italy are definitely winning this game against Switzerland, but it depends whether Switzerland decide to shove t 11 men, well, 10 men behind the ball plus the goalkeeper. So, um, if they keep that entire outfield players behind the ball, which I, I think they will, and we'll just see some long ball football from Switzerland to try and um, hit Italy on the counter. If, if Italy are going to press, then it just makes sense to me that Switzerland play long balls and launch the ball forward and try and attack uh, uh, on the uh, counter and just leave Italy reeling a little bit um, because this is not Italy's style of play but it's better to watch than Italy's usual style of play because they are the Italians have been historically to me in my opinion boring to watch but they've but not in the Turkey game. And I'm expecting them to, to play more of the same, that pr high pressing, attacking style. Um, S Switzerland might be a, a little bit of a difficult task, given that they're, they're, they're definitely going to keep 11 men behind the ball and try and launch it long like a Sean Dyche Burnley team or a Roy Hodgson Crystal Palace team or, a, you know, insert defensive English manager <laughs> wherever applicable. I'm going to go... Uh, now, because uh, Switzerland are probably going to keep 11 men behind the ball, I'm just trying to work out what the score will be. I've got no qualms predicting that, that Wales will probably win 2-1 against Turkey, but I reckon... I reckon Italy might win 2-1. I reckon Switzerland might catch them on the break. I reckon Italy to take the lead early on and then Switzerland to catch them on the break because Italy, even if they take the lead, will just keep going forward. This is the way that Roberto Mancini wants them to play. And as I've said in the past, normally Italy take the lead, sit back. Because they had the because they knew they had the defensive quality to not concede. And I'm not saying they don't have that currently. I mean they do have Cialini in the squad who's ancient, but still a damn good player. Uh, but that's just not the way that Roberto Mancini wants to play. So, hmm, tough one, that one. Italy uh, Italy 2, Switzerland 1? No, Italy, I don't really want to do score prediction. 3-1, there you go, that's my final prediction. We'll move on then. 3-1. <laughs> 3-1. Uh, Let's um, talk about uh, tomorrow's games. In fact, actually, before that, we want to bring you uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, who has uh, given you given us some offbeat football news today uh, from uh, Monday's uh, news. And this is uh, being reported by a few sources. I don't know how true it is. I'm going to suggest it's not actually that true, although Coca-Cola's share price did go down earlier. A, it's business news on a football show, but it's funny. It's a funny story, so stay tuned for it. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo reportedly wiped $4 billion off the Coca-Cola share price market value after his stunt on a Monday press conference. So what he did was he sat down, and uh, obviously with Coca-Cola being a sponsor of the Euros, they have two bottles of Coke visible for the camera, so it says Coca-Cola on two bottles. And what Cristiano Ronaldo did, he looked at them like he was about to pick them up and just smash them on the table. He just picks them up, moves them, and then pl plonks his bottle of water there. And he just went, yeah, don't drink Coke, drink water. And it uh, reportedly wiped $4 billion off Coca-Cola's share price. <laughs> Is, is Cristiano Ronaldo in the Pepsi adverts for the Champions League? Or is that just Messi and um, Neymar and Mbappe? It's, I don't think Ronaldo's in those adverts, but it would be quite quite interesting if uh, Cristiano Ronaldo was sponsored by Pepsi. He, obviously, he has done Coca-Cola adverts in the past, but quite frankly, if he doesn't drink it, it was all about the money, uh, which it often <laughs> always is with footballers and marketing anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but he went out for... 
billion dollars allegedly on the uh share price of coca-cola just by saying at a euro 2020 press conference drink water don't drink coke remember kids don't drink this stuff drink water there you go although i've got to say i prefer the taste of that um <laughs> That's negative. That's a negative comment on water. Uh, let's look ahead to tomorrow's games then. And Wales will aim to silence what will effectively be a home crowd for Turkey. Of course, the game's in Baku, so there is expected to be many a traveller from Turkey into Azerbaijan's capital uh, to cheer them on. It will effectively be a home game for Turkey when they meet in Baku for the second match of Euro 2020. Turkey and Azerbaijan are very close geopolitical allies uh, that share uh, the two states uh, their motto is two states one nation uh, at least 30,000 fans from both countries are expected to be at the Baku Olympic Stadium on Wednesday and Gareth Bale has been talking about this the Welsh captain at a press conference said uh, when you come into an away stadium you know you're going to get abuse said the Welsh captain um, but it's something us footballers have to deal with and have dealt with in the past it's normal you enjoy it and feed off the atmosphere of course they're not saying a they're not saying great things or booing us but you want to silence them it gives you extra motivation if we needed any more it's the atmosphere we enjoy the most and that's what makes football so good turkish captain uh, um burak uh, Yiz, uh, yilmaz uh, hopes the support will help his side recover from that opening 3-0 defeat uh, to uh, italy it is effectively going to be a home game for Turkey. But the team news uh, that we're getting in for this match is that Wales have a fully fit squad and, uh, to choose from, as they did against Switzerland. Kiefer Moore, who equalised in Saturday's draw, was booked in that match. And another caution would rule him out for their final group game against Italy. So maybe see Kiefer Moore dropped uh, for the Turkey game just as a precaution. Because if he does get booked, that's probably their best striker. <laughs> That is their best striker out of the most important game of the group for them. Um, although uh, the <laughs> Welsh manager, the Welsh head coach, uh, Robert Page, uh, he's been talking about it. And Page said he was happy with his team's display after the uh, Swiss game and hinted that he would still or could still make more changes. And he said to the BBC afterwards... Uh, that uh, there's always going to be areas of the game we want to improve on. Uh, we're, we're greedy as footballers and coaches. We want the perfect performance. Uh, and that's that sounds like me when I'm playing football manager. Uh, you, you want the perfect performance. Yes, I do. Then again, I have just managed Mexico and made them North and South American champions. Because, you know, Mexico for some reason got invited to the Copa America and we beat Brazil in the final 3-1. Then I won the Gold Cup. So... Not the horse racing version, the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Anyway, enough of my uh, football manager exploits. Uh, he said, uh, in addition to that, uh, he wants the perfect performance. Uh, all right, it wasn't that uh, on Saturday, uh, but we uh, we got a point out of the game. So that was important. Uh, we've worked on it, different areas that we need to improve on maybe. Uh, but if it all comes together, we'll be in for a positive performance. Turkey also have a fully fit squad as well with... Um, uh, good as confirming Leicester City uh, right back uh, sorry uh, Leicester City centre back Kaglar Soyanucci I'm going to go with that is available despite missing training on uh, Sunday and let's give you some match facts uh, the most recent meeting between these two sides was in 1997 when Turkey won a World Cup qualifier in Istanbul by six goals to four, the only time Wales have conceded four times in a game but still lost. I mean, they've conceded four but won a game. <laughs> Jesus. That must have been a bloody good Wales squad to concede four and still win. Uh, Wales boss Rob Page started in that game, by the way, having made his international debut against Turkey in 1996. So it's all come full circle for him. Turkey attempted just three... Uh, shots against Italy, their lowest total in the European in a European Championship match. None of those efforts were on target. And defeat against Italy means Turkey have lost their opening match at all seven of their major of their last major tournament appearances. 
but they have advanced to the knockout stages uh, the last three times they have avoided defeat in their second game that was at euro 2000 and 2008 plus the 2002 world cup in korea and japan turkey's squad has an average age of 24 and 352 days the lowest side at uh, any uh, uh, any of the uh, euro 2020 size the youngest and so it's very much about building up tournament experience for uh, the Turkish team. Uh, Wales have failed, have only failed to score in one of their their seven European Championship matches. Their two nil semi final defeat to Portugal in 2016. And uh, Gareth Bale has failed to score in his past 12 appearances for Wales, his longest drought since a run of 20 matches between 2007 and 2010. So, there we go. Looking forward to that one. Um, not sure what my prediction uh, My prediction was a Welsh win, wasn't it? A 2-1. Did I say 2-1 earlier? I forget already. I've got a shite memory. We should also say a, a, a big congratulations, obviously, to Cristiano Ronaldo, who has just... He, uh, we've said that he's just got the record for the... We said earlier, he... He broke Michel Platini's record for the most amount of goals in the Euros because uh, he's now got 11 to uh, Platini's 9. But he's only three goals away, I believe, from matching the world record uh, for the amount of goals scored ever in international football. So three goals. He's probably going to get that in this tournament and break that record. He's probably going to get more than three goals unless they exit the group stage, of course, which looks unlikely at this point. Uh, we've got England team news as well uh, that uh, goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale has been called up into the England 2020 Euro 2020 squad to replace injured Dean Henderson of Manchester United. The United keeper has withdrawn uh, from the tournament with a hip issue uh, that would continue to limit his involvement in training, quote unquote. Uh, he will return to his club for further assessment and uh, treatment. So Dean Henderson back at Manchester United now is... Uh, for more uh, treatment on this hip injury. Uh, posting on Twitter, Henderson wrote, I worked so hard to be in this position. I'm devastated uh, to have to withdraw through injury. He added in, a, in that statement. I want to wish my teammates all the best of luck and for the upcoming games and bring it home. Sheffield United's Ramsdale, 23, has no senior England appearances, but was a part of Gareth Southgate's provisional 33-man squad before the tournament. He will follow... Uh, COVID-19 testing protocol before he can enter the England camp. So Henderson is out. Ramsdale is in to the squad. And we've also had uh, other news that the media is obsessed with, with the uh, taking of the knee. I, we we won't have that debate on this show because, quite frankly, the players can do whatever the hell they like. It's, you know, we live in a free country. Let them do what they like. Bring you news on Christian Eriksen, because uh, Christian Eriksen says, we brought you this news yesterday, but I will reiterate this. Christian Eriksen says he's fine under the circumstances and posted a picture uh, from his hospital bed with a thumbs up as he made his first comments uh, since suffering uh, from a cardiac arrest in the Finland-Denmark game. Uh, the midfielder 29 collapsed on Saturday in that Finland game and had to be resuscitated on the pitch. Uh, he said, and I quote, Now I will cheer on the boys on the Denmark team in the next matches. Play for all Denmark. So that's what he said. And the Inter Milan playmaker is now in a stable condition in Copenhagen Hospital. And uh, he said a big thanks for your sweet and amazing uh, greetings and messages from all around the world. It means a lot to me and my family. I'm fine under the circumstances. I still have to go through some examinations at the hospital, but I feel okay, which is fantastic. Fantastic news indeed. Um, obviously, it's still, still early days as to where, you know... Will he play again? I think those kind of questions. It's a bit um, bit early uh, for that. Something that we don't want to see. Uh, maybe that's why, you know, certain, you know, we we make p stances on the pitch sometimes. Uh, Sweden striker Marcus Berg has received online abuse after missing an open goal against Spain. It's just football, lads. Calm down. No, there is no reason to send anyone, uh, any player, uh, a abusive uh, message, an abusive message. Um, 
but Marcus Berg has received online abuse for missing an open goal uh, against Spain in uh, last night's game. Berg missed from close range at the far post after impressive build-up uh, from striker Alexander Isaac. Uh, abusive comments were made after the match under uh, images of the 34-year-old has uh, posted on his Instagram account. So they were directed at him on his personal Instagram account. And the Swedish Football Association will submit a formal report to the police and says the comments over are uh, over the boundaries that we can accept. And they go on to say uh, the Swedish Football Association um, have said that uh, they've spoken to Marcus and we've sat down and collected. Uh, what's on the internet or what we can find and it's more than enough to feel it has gone over the boundaries that we can accept the Swedish uh, that's from the Swedish team security chief Martin Friedman uh, who uh, spoke today and he went on to say so the next step is to go further with the police report and the police are prepared to hear from us and those comments uh, were echoed by Berg's teammate Robin Olsen who said the abuse the abuse is ridiculous and yes we will cover it cuz uh, Eric cuz you'll we'll just see it on the TV if you I don't so first of all before we cover this story cuz it is in the news it is in the Euro 2020 news so I have to cover it um but let me let me say I don't watch the news I don't watch the BBC I don't watch BBC news I don't watch ITV news I don't watch Sky news and certainly don't watch that fucking garbage that is GB it, it got a salacious gossip hosted by that twat Andrew Neil don't watch it. It's crap. But it's stuff that triggers gammons, this. Uh, Tyrone Mings uh, says the England team want to educate and inform in response to criticism from Home Secretary Pretty Patel for taking the knee. I mean, you're the Home Secretary. Can you do your fucking job for, first, Miss Patel? Why don't you go bully some civil servants, allegedly? Uh, the England players were booed by some fans prior to their Euro 2020 game uh, with Croatia at Wembley. I see everybody uh, saying that it's like, um, you know, <laughs> there's nothing like booing your own team before a game to really motivate them to play for you. I can see why some of the players don't want to play. Well, it's not a question that. Of course they want to play, but I can see why some of them are a bit like, why are you booing us? Uh, the England players, uh, as I say, were booed. Patel accused the side of participating in gesture politics, despite the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, uh, urging fans to cheer them and not boo. Why don't you just applaud? Or you know what? If you don't like it, just stand there, do nothing, or just sit down and cross your arms like this. I look really angry and really annoyed. Why don't you just do nothing? I don't do anything. Um, I understand why they do it. And I agree with why they do it. But, um, you know, I, I just just either applaud or just don't do anything. Because the, I'm just tired of this being a news story now. Because it's not news. And I don't want to read it out on this show again. In fact, actually, that is that story banned from the rest of the Euros. Unless it becomes the biggest story, I'm afraid. But it's not. It's not. And it won't. It won't. Uh, UEFA are set to uh, investigate the incident that we told you about yesterday. Austria's Marco Inaltovic, uh, where he said he was not a racist and he allegedly, uh, several reports suggested, uh, he directed a comment at uh, Mas North Macedonian players who have uh, Albanian roots and Inaltovic, who is of Serbian heritage, um, had to be restrained by uh, David Alaba, the captain of Austria. And if you haven't seen the pictures, go check them out because they are very insightful like David Alaba if looks could kill his his stare was it was like he was sh he was internally shouting at Arnautovic just saying shut up you immense fucking idiot that's what his uh, his look looks like the, the the stare that David Alaba had on Mark uh, Marco Arnautovic it, it just said shut up you complete fucking idiot that's 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 how I interpreted it um, but an out of it just come out and said, you know, I would like to make one thing very clear. I am not a racist. I have friends in almost every country and I stand for diversity. Everyone who knows me is aware of that. He was accused of making, um, uh, what was it? Uh, appeared to, uh, like do a, uh, an anti Albanian sign with his hand or something like that. And obviously he may have made comments to North Macedonian players of Albanian heritage, which is unacceptable. And... 
with, and I, I said this yesterday, with uh, one of the Czech players out for 10 games. Um, and I believe that, that, that it was the one that played for Slavia Prague that was accused of uh, racist behaviour against uh, Rangers in the Europa League. Um, they were given a 10-game ban and cannot play in the Euros uh, European Championships. I would like to see if, if an out of if, if an out of is guilty, he should be banned for the rest of the Euros and sent home. That's what I would like to see because it's just it is unacceptable. It is truly unacceptable. In our poll, you have nine minutes left, and it's not close. I will say for our game of the day, it's uh, Portugal three, Hungary nil at the moment with seventy two point two percent, with France one, Germany nil on twenty seven point eight percent of the vote thank you very much uh for voting we've had a look at the fixtures tomorrow it's looking good then turkey versus wales italy versus switzerland finland versus russia let us know who you think will uh win those matches and uh, any other euro news that uh, we get we will uh, bring to you on this show we are live every night after every game from 10 o'clock uh, not every game but after 10 o'clock <laughs> after the final game of the day and uh, as the tournament hops up we might do some lunchtime streams as well but uh, we are live we're here on this channel every day throughout the group stages and every day after games once the games start to slow down then we'll start to slow down but whilst we're in action and all the games are in action we will Make sure that we are streaming every single night to talk about and dissect every little bit of action. So, oh, one more story to bring you, and that is from Scotland. And defender Kieran Tierney could return from injury to face England on Friday, uh, says manager Steve Clark. The Arsenal left back, who's 24, missed Monday's 2 0 defeat to the Czech Republic uh, as the Scots opened their. Euro 2020 account very disappointingly. Clark did not specify Tierney's injury problems, having referred to the issue on Monday as a wee niggle. Uh, he's got a chance, said Clark, and he did a, a little bit of light training today. We'll see how he progresses. In Tierney's absence, Scotland began uh, their first major men's final in 23 years with a loss at Hampden. Uh, However, Clark insists his players are not downbeat as they prepare for a trip to Wembley. The last time they went there in the Euros was 1996. And we were all celebrating today that absolutely amazing Gascoigne goal. And quite frankly, if England do score, which they will against Scotland on Friday, and they don't do the dentist chair celebration, I am going to be one very unhappy Englander. Of course. <laughs> Just love the dentist chair celebration. That's what I love. And if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch it. It's fantastic. Mwah. One of the best celebrations ever. And it was a was it Paul Gascoigne's only goal at a major tournament. He, he didn't really. He wasn't prolific at major tournaments. He was prolific in uh, in um, qualifying and other things like that. But he was never prolific in major tournaments. Um, but he was a world class player. He was a truly world class player. Plus, as as he said, he's come out and talked about. Um, uh, was it Mason Mount, who's got his hair like him? And he said, well, you know, Mason Mount is a very good player, but he's not as good as me because I used to play with, like, uh, <laughs> several shots of whiskey on the pitch. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, so, a downbeat Scotland team? It doesn't sound like it. Scotland, well, to be fair, Scotland will always be motivated to face the old enemy, whereas... They go south of the wall. And if you've ever watched Game of Thrones and wondered what the wall is a reference to, Hadrian's Wall, by the way. If you ever, if you ever wondered that. Right, so let's get you the results then. From our poll, our Game of the Day poll is finishing in any second now. Come on, tell me it's, tell me it's done. Come on, I'm just refreshing the browser. Give me 30 seconds and I will get you that result. And David Marshall, still there, by the way. Still there, trying to get back to the goal. He would walk walk 500 miles to that goal. Uh, it, it does look like uh, you have voted in your game of the day. And you have voted for Portugal 3, Hungary nil. Considering that it was, uh, as I said earlier, a very good game. 
and uh, Hungary were very good up until the last 10 minutes and then they completely collapsed and Portugal their quality just shined they're it, just fantastic and, and you know what uh, and for the Hungary Germany match you know what it's unlikely but still stick a punt on uh, stick a punt on uh, Hungary beating Germany uh, it's finished Port uh, so the 72.2 percent of you agreed with me and thought that the Portugal Hungary game was the game of the day with France and Germany uh, getting 27.8 percent of the vote thank you very much for voting more polls on our Twitter account at TFFS live go follow us there go follow us on TikTok by the way uh, where we'll be doing more euro uh, related content and uh, European team news as well which we need to start getting up and running of course our Facebook page you can see it right there it's facebook.com forward slash the football fan show twitch.tv forward slash the football fan show live after every night of European action from the Euros this year We'll have more polls as well uh, for tomorrow. But I'll just go out and type those up. So you can have a vote on who you think will win tomorrow. Will it be wins for Finland? Will it be a win for Italy, Wales? Or will it be a draw in those matches? Or will the opposing team win? I can't remember who else. Was it Turkey, Russia, and Switzerland? There we go. Shite memory, sorry. Uh, you, <laughs> those will be live very soon. And of course, you can watch this back on YouTube in about half an hour so thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you tomorrow from around 10 o'clock have a great wednesday bye bye